Example 49.5. Use the table below which summarizes the results of a 2004 study. Find the probability of a single randomly selected subject being very happy given that he or she earns $90,000 and over per year. Then find the probability that a randomly selected individual is very happy given that he or she earns under $20,000 per year. What can we conclude? So I, I can see clearly this is a probability problem, right? Find the probability, find the probability. But I need to know what type of probability before I can proceed. So when I look here, it says find the probability of a single randomly selected subject. That's just one subject, and then it says given that. So remember, when you're only taking one subject, it could be either basic probability, addition rule of probability, or conditional probability. But because we're um, given this phrase, given that, in the problem, that narrows it down to just the conditional rule for probability. It's the same in this part, right? Find the probability that a randomly selected individual is very happy given that, and there's that given that phrase again that implies condition rule of probability, so conditional probability. So let's move um, this here. I've already written out one of the statements for us for the first one. Find the probability of a single randomly selected subject being very happy, right? Given that, we use the straight up and down line to represent the phrase given that, the person is in the $90,000 per year or more per year category, right? Let's do it again for the next statement and see this how this is written down. Then it says, then find the probability that a randomly selected individual is very happy given that they earn under 20,000 a year, right? So under 20,000 per year. So very happy given under 20,000 per year. All right, good. So we've done this a few times, condition and rule for probability in the earlier examples. So we can then move a little faster. Let's focus our attention using the shortcut method. We're gonna focus our attention only on the category that corresponds to $90,000 or more per year. That's this category, right? So we should only be focusing on this column and the total for that column becomes our denominator. So we're going to use 106 at the bottom of this fraction as our denominator. And then of the remaining numbers in that column, we need to pick the number that corresponds to very happy. So which one of these is the very happy number? It's this one here, right? So 45 becomes our number for the top of that fraction. Okay, let's fill in this fraction and then we'll work out the decimals to compare these. So we look at this one, under 20K is the given that condition. Remember, we focus all our attention on the given that condition. We don't look anywhere else. So under 20,000, which category is that? That's the first column. So we're in that first column. We're going to take the total of that column to be our denominator. So that's 317. And then we just look at this number, the very happy number. That should be one of the numbers left over in that column. And sure enough, the very happy number here is 70. So 70 people out of that group were in the very happy category. All right, let's get the decimals and we'll make a comparison, right? So we have 45 divided by 106. And when we do that, we get the answer approximately 0.425 or 42.5%. Let's look at this group now. 70 divided by 317, and you can see we get 0 0.221 or 22.1 percent. So remember, this is basically 42.5 percent and 22.1 percent. So what can we conclude from that? Well, it looks like, based on this, that making $90,000 a year or more puts you more likely to be happy than if you're in the under $20,000 a year category because only 22% of those people surveyed reported being very happy. So this number is quite larger than this one. It's twice as large almost, right? So it seems like you're almost twice as likely to be happy if you make a lot of money a year as opposed to making a little bit of money per year. There are actually economists that look at this, psychologists and economists, and they have um, found out that once you meet your sort of basic needs, once you make enough money to meet your basic needs, that would be different in, in depending on the community you live in and what your cost of living is in that community. But let's say for argument's sake, it takes $70,000 to reach that threshold of where you can meet your basic needs and you don't have to worry about your car breaking down and not being able to afford the payment or something like that. You have a roof over your head, you have food in your refrigerator, you have clothes on your back, you know, you have money to take care of all the basic necessities of life. You know, once you reach that threshold, the improvement in happiness starts to taper off. So the bottom line is, is that we're basically saying that, you know, um, yes, if you're 
at the point where you're not making enough money to cover your basic needs, you might find that it hurts your happiness significantly. But once you reach a certain threshold, the improvement in happiness may not be that dramatic. So there's kind of a tapering off, right? Or kind of a law of diminishing returns, right? More and more money doesn't necessarily make you more and more happy. So that's the idea then. Um, and the, the data is very interesting because it is from real data in a 2004 study. So we can at least affirm that there's a connection between income and happiness, but um, it may be a complicated connection, not just as simple as to say more money makes you more happy. In this case, the comparison between these two salary points, it seems that you're more than or almost twice as likely to be happy if you're in the, or very happy, pardon me, if you're in the 90K plus per year category versus being under 20K.